So here's how OCaml and HM type inference uses this idea of type schemes. When you get to a polymorphic function like this, say id, which has type alpha arrow alpha, the type inference algorithm will actually generalize that type to a type scheme. So it'll take that alpha arrow alpha and generalize it to alpha dot alpha arrow alpha. Think of that as generalizing in the sense of universal quantification. It's saying for all alpha, the function has that type. Then at each use of the function, at each application of it, type inference will instantiate that type with a new type variable. So it's like filling in that universal quantification with something more specific now. At the application of id to zero, we might instantiate it then to say beta arrow beta, assuming beta is a fresh type variable. And then later, at the application of id to true, it would get instantiated with a different type variable, say gamma arrow gamma. Now, each use of the function is independent of the other uses of the function. So each usage can end up having its own type, whether that's int arrow int or bool arrow bool. To make use of generalization and instantiation, we just need to update two rules in little ways. So the naive let rule we gave is almost correct. It's just we need to generalize a piece of it. So when we go to put the type T1 of the binding expression E1 into the environment, we generalize it to create a type scheme. Now the slight complication there is we need some additional information in order to do the generalization correctly. We need to know the constraints that were generated, the environment, and the name of the variable. So that's why the call to generalize occurs outside of all of those. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. The name rule is the other one we need to update. Here we need to instantiate any type scheme we discover when we use the name of a variable. So instantiation then in more detail. If you apply a instantiate to a type, strictly speaking, a type, not a type scheme, so there's no quantification going on, it, do it doesn't change it, just leaves types unchanged. But when you instantiate a type scheme, you're changing it back into a type. You get rid of the alpha one, alpha two, alpha n, whatever, however many there are, dot in front of it. And you substitute a fresh type variable for each of them. So if you had something like the identity function, which would be alpha dot alpha arrow alpha, that would become beta arrow beta for a fresh beta. Generalization is the harder one of the two. So it takes these uh, three or maybe four inputs here, a constraint set, a static environment, a name of a variable, and the type that was initially found for that variable that we're now possibly going to generalize. Here's what generalize does it fully finishes inference of that binding expression. So it's like, we're going to stop here. We're not going to worry about the rest of the program for a minute. We're going to take that constraint set C1 and unify it. That'll get us a substitution. We then apply that substitution to the environment. So we're sort of mining that substitution for all the information we can get out from it. We also apply it to the type T1. So that gets us a new environment, let's call it env1, and a new type, let's call it u1. Now, we generalize u1. So we, we had fully finished inference for it. We look at it and say, are there any type variables here we could generalize and turn this into a type scheme? Now, you might start off by saying, well, I could generalize all the type variables. In, it. in fact, there are some that maybe should not and those are any type variables that also show up still in the static environment. And the reason for that is they come from surrounding code, code outside of the let expression that we're currently working on. Right? It must be nested inside something else that itself bound some name. So we don't want to generalize those because the outside environment already has some assumptions about those type variables. Maybe it's going to use them someplace else. Maybe there's constraints that are going to emerge about those someplace else. So we don't allow those to be generalized. Generalize then returns that environment that had the substitution applied to it, as well as the binding of X 
to this generalized type scheme S1. This is what makes polymorphic type inference work. This is, in a way, the essence of HM type inference, that it does this generalization to type schemes at let bindings. And so sometimes this way of doing type inference uh, is referred to as let polymorphic.